Hi gang, Bob Boving here with the Mystery Project and the next episode of Peggy Delaney, written by James W. Nichol. Peggy is a columnist on a big city daily, a dedicated journalist and fighter for the people who matter most to her, her readers. This leaves her own life approaching disarray. This time, Peggy starts out chasing a story about a family winning big on a lottery. That's the upside. Then it all takes a vicious toboggan slide. Serpent's Tooth, Episode 2 of Peggy Delaney, starring Kyra Harper as Peggy. Hello there, you've reached Peggy Delaney, Toronto Tribune. If you have something confidential you want to pass on, just leave your name and number. If you're calling to give me fulsome, unqualified praise for my columns, please feel free. If you're calling to scream at me, fascist communist, cop-loving, cop-hating, pro-lesbian, anti-lesbian, crypto Bay Street swamp pig, go for it. After all, this is a quasi-democracy. I've never thought of you as a swamp pig. Charging water, Buffalo, maybe. Anyway, that lottery case you were interested in, the preliminary hearings this aft, if you're around. I'm fine, mate. Easy. You weren't upstairs in the courtroom, so where else but downstairs in the food court? Charming. How's Nick? Hungry. How's Mrs. Peggy Delaney? Still waiting. For what? Oh. For Amber? Yeah. She hasn't called you yet? She hasn't made up her mind yet. Oh. Well... I mean, how difficult can it be living with me for a few months? Hmm... I'm just asking her to come east to Toronto for one school term. That's all. Three months. She hasn't lived with you before, though. Has she? It's always been dad and stepmom. So it's not just three months. You're changing the relationship. Maybe she's comfortable with you being the long-distance mom. She's come to think about you in a certain way. That's the problem. I don't want her to think of me that way anymore. She's not giving me a chance. She hasn't said no. No. Because she doesn't know how to. And I'm so bloody-minded, I won't let her off the hook. Look, I don't want to talk about this anymore. Okay. So, what's happening? The courtroom was empty. Because the daughter doesn't have her defense ready yet. The judge gave her a break and put it over to August 12th. So, she still has the three million plus she won in the lottery... She's still refusing to share a penny of it with her parents. They're still destitute. And they're still determined to sue her for support. They're waiting to talk to you. Who are? Mom and Dad and assorted relatives. When I mentioned I was a Toronto Trib reporter and you may be interested in talking to them, doing a column, their lawyer allowed that might be a good idea. Same deal. You do the hard news coverage. I do a column. And we pull our notes? Right. But the lawyer wants to talk to you first. Spin you in the right direction, I guess. Speaking of which... Mr. Lipstock. Mr. Bauer. And this is Peggy Delaney. Of course. Mr. Lipstock? Well, I'm really pleased to meet you. So, what do you think? This is an interesting situation, isn't it? What is? The daughter, I mean. That winning that kind of money can have such a bizarre effect on a person. My clients are only asking for 2000 a month, and only because they're in such desperate financial shape. Maybe she hates them. Well, if she does, they certainly don't know why. They're completely surprised, shocked, and upset by it. She was kicked out of their house when she was 14. Oh? Well, that's what she claims. My clients beg to differ. They're living on public housing on family benefits of less than a thousand a month. By the end of the month, they're living on peanut butter sandwiches and instant potatoes. So how are they paying you? Legal aid. No, it's the case itself that interests me. The whole question of what constitutes a family these days. What we owe each other, regardless of any circumstances. Defining obligations, I guess. And the point where love is so mangled, obligations stop? I guess so. Your column could address these questions about natural family obligation. Uh, 
Not that I'd presume to tell you what to write. On the supposition that judges read. <laughs> well, you never know. Well, Miss Lipstock, love and families, I don't know. They're not exactly uh, my area of expertise. Hi. Hi. Nick Bauer, Toronto Trib. And Peggy Delaney? Pleased to meet you. Likewise. Uh, it was nice of you to wait around. It was the least we could do. This here's my mother, Pat Watkins. Uh, hi, Mrs. Watkins. Hello. Hi there. My old man. Mr. Watkins? Yep. He hasn't worked for eight years. Not because he doesn't want to. His back's buggered. Did it lifting cases of tomato juice. But no workman's comp, right, Dad? Well, I tried to work, you know. Damn near killed me. Put me in the hospital. He was in traction for three weeks. You had to piss in a bottle for three weeks, didn't you, Dad? Yep. Why no workman's comp? The same reason they give everybody. Said he didn't hurt himself on the job. So, Mom, babysits. What do you make on a good week, Mom? Forty, fifty dollars? Not always. Nobody has any money anymore. I do it anyway, to help out. They've been living in the same public housing rat hole for 29 years. It's not a rat hole, Junior. It was good enough for you kids. Oh, sorry. Regent Park? Mm, I know it. Right. Well, we all grew up there. She grew up there. Mom and Dad trying their best. She wouldn't even look at me, you know? Up there in the courtroom? It's pitiful is what it is. It's downright pitiful. And who are you? I'm Cassie, Junior's wife. I'm the daughter-in-law. Cinderella cleaning. Good cleaning. Good afternoon. Hi, Bernie. Hey, sweetheart. How's my best pal? Okay. Good cleaning. Good afternoon. That's kind of lame, isn't it? Uh, well, I'm working on it. That's why you called. To critique my telephone answering? I don't have enough problems. No. I just called just to say hi. Oh. Hi. So, uh, I'm working on an interesting story. Yeah? It's about this girl who won over three million in the lottery. Huh? Her name's Ellie Watkins. She's 26 years old. And her family, who don't have any money, thinks she should give them a little bit of her. Mm. So, she's busy running around getting notarized statements from people willing to say she didn't get any love from her parents since she was 14 years old. So, I guess she feels mm, it's payback time, you know? There's a lot of that going around. Mm, what do you mean? Amber hasn't made up her mind yet about coming. No? Well, I don't think you so should So anyway, really... you know how I said after I asked her, I wouldn't have another drink? How could I forget? I heard trumpets blow. Anyway, I don't know. What's the matter? I'm afraid, Bernie. You can't believe how much. I want a drink. But you can't, sweetheart. That's not the deal, and it's not a good idea anyway, is it? No. No. You wanted to prove to yourself you could do it, right? Right. And you can. You can, right? Uh-huh. Good. So, you want to hang out this aft? I'm on my way to talk to this girl's mother. Here's that, Paul. Oh, great. Thanks, Emil. I guess I shouldn't say that. That's all right. We're not asking for a mill, you know. I wouldn't ask for anything. If it was up to me. Glass? Nope. It's okay. Uh, Mrs. Watkins, your daughter says she was kicked out. She lived in stairwells and abandoned buildings. She tried to come back home and your husband broke two of her teeth. Ellie says a lot of things. Sometimes I think she really believes them. She says them enough. Not true. She ran away. Every night, Junior and his friends looked for her. Found her, too, on Young Street. That was her new home. It's exactly what she said to me, sitting right there where you're sitting now. And that bunch of street kids she ran with, that was her real family. We weren't her real family anymore. She'd still come back here, though. When she was hungry or sick or there was a blizzard outside. She'd sleep right where you are, too. Her hair all tangled and dirty. I try to keep her here. I talk my face blue. I cry, you know. 
But she licked a few dollars from my purse out of Dad's pocket and back to Young Street. The teeth? Oh, she broke a couple of teeth, all right. I don't even want to think how that might have happened, but it wasn't her father. That much, I know. Oh, that was a long time ago now. Well, over 12 years. This is a terrible mess, isn't it? For you and your family. What are you really feeling, Pat? What do you really want to have happen? I... I don't know. I think... I think you should just come round and say she was sorry for all the things she said. And if she could just say, I love you, Ma. I think that's all I want, really. That's all. That's all? That's bullshit, Mom. What do you mean, that's all? I didn't know you were here. We were just in the kitchen. How didn't you know? Well, I just didn't, that's all. Oh, God, it's not like it's some big place. Bullshit, Mom. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. She owes you plenty. You'll wake your father. I don't care. The thing here is, my mother's too good. That's the problem. She doesn't know how to speak for her rights. That's absolutely the truth. Ellie's got $3,600,000. Think of the interest she's making on that. Never mind the rest of it. It makes me sick. I don't care if she don't give a friggin' cent to us. Put that in the paper. It's not for us. It's for Mom and Dad. How could she be so goddamn cold? That's what I'd like to know. I guess they've gone. It is so. It hurts what your daughter is doing. Uh-huh. It's not the money. No. I've lost my daughter. You don't really know what... You don't... You don't want to think about it. Maybe it's not true, you know? Maybe you can still be friends and... and something happens. Like this, and... And then you know. Yeah. Hi, honey. It's me. Oh. Hi, Mom. Hi. I was uh, just... Well, I was at the office, so I thought I'd call. I haven't decided yet. I'm still not... No, that's all right. That's why I'm calling, really. I've decided. It's crazy to ask you to come down here and leave all your friends and go to a new school and everything just because I thought it was a good idea. Obviously, it's not, and... Uh, I don't want you to worry about it anymore. So, forget it. Now you want me to forget it? Mm-hmm. I've got a better idea. Remember how we've always talked about taking that boat trip up past the Queen Charlotte Islands? Let's do that. I'll book for August, and we'll cruise up the coast for six days instead, okay? Okay. Great. Great, then. Uh, so... Anyway, I'm busy, honey. I have to go now. I'll call you Sunday. All right. All right. Bye. Bye, Mom. Bye. So, how did your talk with the Watkins go? What? The Watkins. I let her off the hook. Who? What? Amber? Mm-hmm. She sounded happy. Oh, well, that's... that's too bad. Ellie? Ellie Watkins? Yes? I buzzed at the front, no answer. Peggy Delaney, Toronto Tribune. How did you find me? I asked your lawyer. He thought it might be a good idea. I was supposed to call first, but... Whew, you really do have a gorgeous house. <laughs> Look at these grounds. Oh, and a fountain. You know, you got it made when you got a water fountain with a naked boy in the middle. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you're aware that this is private property. Yes, I am. But I've talked to your parents. Oh? So I thought it was only fair to talk to you as well. But you go on with whatever it was you were doing it. What were you doing? Nothing much. Just walking around. 
court's not much fun, is it? It drags everybody down. Yes, it does. You know, your mother's proud of you. Well, who wouldn't be? On the street at 14, back to school at 16. Well, how did you live, by the way? Student welfare. Graduated from high school. Can I ask you a question? What? What happened way back then? To hear your family tell it, you just ran away. I know. Your mother, whatever you think. She does love you, you know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's a joke? You tell me. Anyway, there's no answer. To what? To why I'm saying no to them. There's no logical reason. Something broke. Broke? I can't reach it with my mind, with my logic, you know. I mean, logically, what's the difference? I've got plenty of money. And like you said, it all happened a long time ago. But when your parents, when they reject you, I mean profoundly reject you, something gets broken too deep inside, and you can't touch it, and it won't heal. And so you say no. All you can do is say no. What was it? doesn't matter now. Of course it does. It matters. Can't she make it up to you? Ever? You don't understand. But I was talking to her. She, she doesn't want any money. She just wants... Uh, Junior does. My brother? After I refused to give them anything, he said he wanted a million and a half dollars, or he'll come over here one night when I'm all alone. And I am all alone. And... And what? And... He'll slip me open from my crotch to my neck. And those are his words, not mine. Jesus. Yeah. Well, now you've got some news, right? Have you told the police? No. Your lawyer? No. I mean, what good would it do? He hasn't done anything yet. And if I did tell, that might just be enough to... to make him go crazy. Maybe he's just shooting his mouth off. No. No, I've seen him like this before. I know what he gets like. He wants a million and a half dollars. That's all. Or he'll kill me. And I refuse to give it to him. Then why don't you just go away somewhere? Why do you think he's got me in court? Because he wants to hold me here. And I am here. And if I go away, what am I going to do? Jump at every shadow the rest of my life? He's not dumb, you know. Don't ever make the mistake of thinking he's dumb. He'll find me. What about your parents? They're in court asking for 2000 a month. They don't know about this. <sighs> I don't know what they know, what they don't know. I mean, I haven't talked to them in 12 years. Can they calm Junior down? I have no idea. Well, maybe they should find out what he's up to. It's no good keeping quiet about this. Here, I'll show you something. You see this? Well, is it a tape recorder? Uh-huh, right. And this little device... The wire plugs into the tape machine, and at the other end is this mic. You just stick it on the telephone receiver, and it picks up both ends of the conversation. I use it all the time. Ellie, if you called your brother, say from a payphone on a busy corner so we can hear the traffic going by, you say you just had to phone because you're upset. I am upset. Do you suppose he might make a threat we could record? Oh, he's too smart to threaten on a phone. But if you are obviously on a payphone? God. I'll try. Hello. It's you? Hi, Pat. You alone? Uh, no. Junior's here. Oh. Well, maybe that's a good thing. What is? To get things out in the open. What's really happening about Ellie? I don't know what you're talking about. That's the problem. Oh? Well, don't just stand out there. Okay. Who's that? Uh, it's just, um, uh, um, it's me. Hey, how are you? Where is everybody? Just us. Oh. So? You write in a column? I talked to Ellie. You did? Uh-huh. And I found out something very interesting. 
I just wanted to tell your mother, Junior, that you are making very ugly criminal threats to your sister. What? The hell? You want to reconcile with her, Pat? There's no chance with this. Are you nuts? If you believe anything she says... Ellie called you at your apartment this afternoon, right? Nice conversation you had with her. Something about one and a half mil or you'll inherit it all as next of kin. Oh, bullshit. I taped it. You want to hear it? There's already five copies. Do you want to hear it, Pat? You get out of my house. God, you should know. How is you and Ellie going to make it up? Make it up. Up. For that piece of garbage. I wouldn't spit on her. You talk to her, eh? I'll bet you did. Well, I'll tell you what she was really like. Thirteen years old, she was running around with a bunch of druggies. Punks. Twice her age. She was being screwed by every low life in Regent Park. Bloody disgrace to her father made me a laughing stock we couldn't show our face. Oh, so what did you do to her, Pat? What did her father do? He knocked out her teeth, didn't he? He did what he had to do. He was trying to knock some sense into her. She had it coming. So she takes off, never comes back. Like we're not here, like we fell off the earth or something. A few years later, Junior goes into this restaurant. There she is, big as life. She's running the place. She still wants nothing to do with us, talks about us like we're dirt. But Junior keeps his eye on her. She wins the lottery. He says, why don't you help them out? She says, no. He asks again, anything to help. She says, no. No. We talk to a lawyer, talk to her, no. Take her to court, no. It's always no. It's like we don't exist. It's like we aren't here. So we make sure she damn well knows we're here. A million and a half dollars and she knows we're here. So you knew what Junior was doing. And everything you said to me, it was all a con. You stupid bitch. It's not a con. It's my life. I was only kidding her. That tape, it don't mean nothing. Yeah. You better get out of here. So she knew all along, huh? Somehow that doesn't surprise me. She talked about drugs. Low lifes. A 13-year-old girl, everybody's girlfriend. <gasps> Did she? What's the truth, Ellie? I had a friend. He ran with kind of a crazy crowd. They were all black kids. I loved them. Junior's gang beat the hell out of them. My father beat the hell out of me. That's all. It was like dying. And your mother? What did she do? She didn't do anything. One more Peggy Delaney regular. Thanks, Charlie. With a fresh twist of lemon on the side. Feels good. Oh, it's been a long, long day, Charlie. Do you have any kids? Oh, you bet. How many? Oh, uh, let's see. Seven. Seven? Jesus, you should learn to control yourself. You're right there. I bet they're all great kids, though. Well... I bet you're good to them, too. I only have one, a daughter. There's all kinds of ways to hurt a kid. You don't have to leave any marks. Sometimes you can do it Long distance. Can't you, Charlie? I know, I know. Poor little Sammy. Poor, poor Sam. He's hungry. Oh, messages. Hold on a sec. I'll get you. Hey, I've been looking all over for you, ever since you called. Anyway, uh, 
Obviously, uh, <laughs> I couldn't find you. You okay? No. Call me, all right? As soon as you can, please. I'll be waiting. God, you're not there. It's after two your time, isn't it? Look, I don't know why you think you can just tell me what to do. Like, like I don't have any brains or anything. You're always doing that. talking to my friends, and they think I should come. So, I'm, I'm gonna come. I want to, I think. So, call me so we can arrange times and stuff, okay? Okay. Bye. Oh. God. You have been listening to Serpent's Tooth, Episode 2 of Peggy Delaney by James W. Nickel. Kyra Harper played Peggy. John Stalker was Bernie. John Winston Carroll was Nick. William Colgate was Charlie. Michael Caruana was Junior. Joanne Vanicola was Cassie. Terry Tweed was Pat. Don Dickinson was Ed. Amber Lee Weston was Ellie. Sam Malkin was Mr. Lipsock. And Katerina Scarsone was Amber. The music was composed and conducted by Milan Gimlicka. The recording engineer was Greg DeClute. Sound effects were by Drago Grandich. The associate producers were Nancy Dow, Leanne McDonald, and Sandra Breutman. The program was produced and directed in Toronto by Bill Howell, the executive producer of The Mystery Project. Our coordinating producer is Barry Morgan. I'm Bob Boving, thanking you for listening.